name is Tim Flower, and like John Keats 200 years ago, my writing has been inspired and energised by the sublime seascape here on the east side of the island. When I got stuck writing my first novel, Fixing 66, I would wander along this beach between St Helens and Ride, and in Keats terms, feast my eyes on the wideness of the sea. The seaside here also inspired the novel I'm currently writing, about a large beachfront house harbouring an astonishing family history. So, like many writers before me, I owe a lot to the island. I'm a writer and I live here on the Isle of Wight. I write murder mysteries and suspense set here on the island. I love it up here at Modeston. It's a place where I can come to think and breathe. There's downland and the coast. That stretch of water between us and the mainland is very important for the island's identity, otherness. The people in my novels are all fictitious, but the characters will visit places that you will recognise, such as the Longstone, Mottesden Down, Carisbrook Castle. To me, the island is so much more than a backdrop, it's a character in its own right. I want my stories to be soaked in the atmosphere and beauty of the island. I feel very privileged to write here. The Isle of Wight has inspired me into writing and producing 14 travel films. The Beautiful Isle of Wight, A Closer Look, Fairest Isle, Carisbrook Castle was shown on Sky TV. One of my novels follows the disastrous D-Day rehearsals in Devon. Here on the 6th of June 1944, 7,000 ships gathered off the Needles. The sea was black with ships, they said. With the shore women, we wrote a poetry play, The Wreck of the Irex. We wrote benchmarks about commemorative benches in West White. My works in a poetry collection, Roman Voices, in the Braiding Roman Villa, and on a plaque at a bus stop at Bleak Down for the millennium. I've taught gifted and eager writers at the Isle of Wight College. Many are now published. I belong to the White Writers Group. Making Waves was our first anthology. In Black and White is the latest. Carisbrook Castle inspired my play about Charles I, Exit the King, performed at the Ventnor Fringe Festival and at Carisbrook Castle. I have a new children's book coming out about a little girl and a lighthouse, inspired by filming up inside the Needles Lighthouse. Inspiration is everywhere, in our wonderful libraries, our exhibitions, Julia Margaret Cameron at Dimbola, Alfred Lord Tennyson at Farringford, and there's the wonderful annual Isle of Wight Literary Festival in Cowes. Charles Dickens said, the island is the prettiest place I ever saw in my life, and I think he was right. I'm a fairly new island author, and to my bank manager, and not a few of my critics, I'm a poor author. I wrote my first book, half a century ago and with the enthusiasm and naivety of youth I sent it to the biggest literary agency in the land. They got back almost straight away and were very excited and they said they were sure to be able to find me a publisher very soon. In fact it was 30 years before I found someone to publish my work. I'm now on to number 32 and find inspiration here on this glorious island. Queen Victoria's poet laureate, Alfred Lord Tennyson, made his home here. Keats and Swinburne composed great works here, as did Lewis Carroll and Charles Dickens. I wonder how long that tree's been standing there. Now, 
talking of Lewis Carroll, I wonder if Alice is in. Forgot the key. Whether we write for pleasure or gain or even pain, hundreds and perhaps thousands of writers and poets and authors draw their inspiration from this treasure island. If it was good enough for Dickens and Tennyson and a host of past masters of the pen, I reckon it's good enough for us. Northwood House, a house like no other, a house shifting through time, a secretive house situated in the picturesque surroundings of cows on the beautiful Isle of Wight. As this house has turned through time, memories of the past still cling to this very strange place. Stories and sights fill the ballrooms and empty offices from 400 years of tales and legends. Today their ghosts remain, pacing hallways, protecting rooms, and always making their presence felt. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Said Shakespeare, Hamlet, and he was talking to a ghost. Do I believe in ghosts? I don't know, because I don't know what a ghost is. My name is Tim Wanda, author, historian, lecturer, and occasionally paranormal researcher. I come as it a skeptic to see if there is anything there. And at Northwood House, there are, there is something there. Two years ago, we put together a book, The Ghosts of Northwood House. All proceeds go to the charity, but in there is the story of the Ghosts of Northwood House. Everything we've seen and heard and all the stories I've been told through all the years. And it's an incredible story. All I can say is, read the book and make your own mind up. Here at Northwood we get unexplained temperature drops. I've seen it, we've recorded it, the temperature can crash five and a half degrees in 10 seconds and then come back up slowly. Now is that associated with the fact that the alarm system in the same room keeps tripping? Is it associated with what our friends, the mediums, have sensed in that room? Or that other people have done with Ouija boards, which I'm not a great fan of, but are they all completely different effects? Is the fact that people have seen shapes in the room, that things disappear and things appear? These are all established and known paranormal phenomena. And I use that word lightly, you don't use it lightly, it's, it's a phenomena. I don't know whether they're associated, but here at Northwood House, we've, we've seen them, we've experienced them, and they've been experienced by people who had no idea that's what Northwood House had. actually moved to the Isle of Wight when I was uh, 13 years old. I got a scholarship to Bembridge School and uh, had a fantastic uh, time there when I was a young teenager and my, my parents, my family still live on the island now. Um, my mum's had a beautiful Montessori nursery for many years. My dad has a lovely antique shop on Ride High Street and uh, I go back every year now to visit quite a few times a year, three or four times a year to see my family and just enjoy being on the island basically and all the you know seeing all the beautiful scenery and the beaches and everything I love going back every year um, and I came across uh, this festival so I wanted to send a video because I started as a self-published author um, not too long ago back in December 2019 um, and the reason I started is because I just had a really great idea for, for a niche uh, in picture books and uh, that was that basically there weren't any bilingual picture books out there that I could see that looked endearing and um, nice and colourful and, and ones that children would want to read and bilingual parents or parents that want to teach a new language 
would want to learn and read with their children. So um, I started with my first book, which is Look at Me, I'm Learning Spanish. And then what I did, I just kept the same story and the same artwork. And then I developed the series into other languages. So I then went to French um, and I did all the European languages. Um, and I did six of those. And then after that, I thought, well, I can do more with this. So I did another four languages. So I also did Russian, Chinese Mandarin, Brazilian Portuguese, and Arabic. Um, from then on, I thought, do you know what? This is actually going to be very um, helpful for um, uh, parents that want to teach their children English as well. So I actually reverse translated half the series. So this is the Brazilian Portuguese one back into English. Um, and that actually gave me 15 books after about uh, three or four months since I started my self-publishing journey, which is fantastic. I feel like I really did jump in a bit, though. Um, <laughs> but I ended up with 15 books, and that actually provided the foundation for me to do what my real passion is, and that's write my uh, rhyming picture books. So just after that, I published my first uh, rhyming picture book called The Bee That Made Jam. And I've also just published my second rhyming picture book, which is called T-Rex Twins, The Brothers With Arms. Um, I've got another one coming out um, for Halloween called The Witchy Grub and the Grubty Witch. And I've got two more planned for the end of this year. So in my first year of self-publishing, I'm aiming to have uh, 20 books published, which I'm very proud of. And I'd be more than happy to be interviewed if anyone would uh, like to get in touch with me. So thanks for your time. Hello, my name is Tim Wanda, author, historian, based on the lovely Isle of Wight. And for the last five years, I've been researching the amazing military history of this incredibly interesting island. Uh, the first book, uh, 2018, was this one, Culver Cliff and the Isle of Wight at War. So, as 1940 dawns, the world is at war. Here on the Isle of Wight, we're at risk of invasion. When the invasion comes, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, it's going to come here at Sandown Bay. This is an area that for 2,000 years have been at risk of invasion, and we now know that the Nazi war machine, the world's most highly trained and mechanised army, is going to arrive here at Sandown Bay. It's going to smash inland, it's going to cut the island in half in perhaps less than 60 hours and take the Isle of Wight. The last stitch defences were going to be the Palmerston Forts. These amazing edifices had laid almost unused for 70, 80 years because they were built against the French and the enemy never came. Here on this small island where radar was developed, where chain home was installed, chain home extra low, chain home low. But when I dug down a little bit deeper, the story was amazing. I interviewed Home Guard officers, Home Guard soldiers, who literally in 1940 were the last line of defence. They really expected that the invasion was coming, and it was coming tomorrow. This is the defence of the realm, the last line, watching the skies, watching the air, and a technological defence of the Isle of Wight, which really is a whole new story that had never been told before, while the Battle of Britain raged overhead. So come see me in the Office Pavilion. My name's Tim Wonder. Culver Cliff and the Isle of Wight is the book. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Beth. And I'm Glenis. And together, we were inspired by Shanklin Theatre to write our fabulous play. Called? Ooh, oh. what was that? <laughs> the theatre was set to close in 2007, but was rescued by a gallant army of enthusiasts and today it's a successful enterprise. Before Covid we were able to do loads of interesting research with the theatre supporters and staff. Then we wrote, we laughed, we imagined and we edited. And during lockdown we were able to test out each act with our fellow members of the White Writers Group at the critique sessions. Finally Bembridge Little Theatre Group performed it online with a full cast. It's an Isle of Wight creation and we would love to see it on stage. Do contact us. It's a light drama with a love interest, humour, twists and turns and ghosts. 
She's Bev. She's Glennis. And our play's called... Oh, what was that? Oh, what was that? What was that? What was that? What was that?